Our patrol east of the Rockall Bank continues. I have not given up hope that we will find a big enemy convoy that we can fire all our torpedoes at and then go home after spending just a few days or maybe even just a few weeks out here. Imagine my delight when my radio operator informed me that we received a radio message, a report of an enemy convoy. From Befehlshaber der U-Boote to U-38-105-124 Commanders Liebe, Schewe and Schulz Erste Gruppe Kampfgeschwader 40 reports Convoy in grid AM-1934 heading east Speed unknown KG-40 is a bomber wing flying maritime patrols with Focke-Wolf Condor aircraft and they have spotted a convoy to our east our navigator, Horst Haag, immediately starts to plot an intercept course. Unfortunately, it doesn't look very promising. The enemy convoy is about 150 kilometers southeast of us, continuing to sail east, so we would have to chase them down. We don't know their speed, but let's assume that they are sailing at a speed of 9 knots. If we were to chase them at a very high speed of 40 knots, we would still have to chase them for 450 kilometers, a whole day sailing eastwards at very high speed with a very high fuel consumption into shallow waters and enemy air cover. A difficult decision has to be made. Does the mere possibility of catching up to that convoy justify such a high fuel expenditure and a possible breakdown of our engines? I don't think so. But I am also not willing to give up the chase completely. We set an easterly course at medium speed. With just a bit of luck, we'll be able to find some stragglers from that convoy. We sailed east for a whole day without finding any contacts, until suddenly a member of the watch crew called out a contact on the horizon, a ship well, the excitement very quickly died down when everybody realized that the apparent ship not only wasn't moving, but also didn't have the shape of a ship. I of course knew what we were looking at. This is Rockall Island, the highest peak of the underwater Rockall Bank, a granite pillar rising out of the ocean. I have to admit that I was curious to lay my eyes on it, and I was looking forward to this opportunity. It is a very curious sight. You look around yourself and you see nothing but the waves and the sky. And there, completely isolated from everything else, stands this tall and unmoving rock. The rough Atlantic throws powerful wave after wave after wave at this rock. For tens of thousands, no hundreds of thousands of years. And yet it has never been able to topple it or to wash it away. To me, this towering rock symbolizes perseverance, regardless of the circumstances that you find yourself in. May they even be the worst ones imaginable. If you have the inner strength to resist them, you will persevere. You will remain standing tall and proud and nothing can topple you and push you over. I say as much to the men standing watch on the bridge, sure that they will carry on those words to the other men in the boat. And I can feel that their resolve has been strengthened, just as mine has. We turn around and head back west. We return to our patrol area and spend the next six days looking for targets. Unfortunately, without any luck. But then something else found us. Aircraft on the horizon! Aircraft spotted. Okay, bearing 3, 2, 5, what is it? Those are... Those are not good. I don't think we have the time to dive. Increase speed, man the flag guns. 
Heckstation. Flugzeug kann mehr Geschütze besetzen. Jawohl, Herr Kaloy. Neuer Kurs 2-6. Turn the boats. I might have to endure one run from these guys. You're allowed to open fire, yes. Well, please do. Damn, they're shooting back. Now comes the difficult part. Turn. Hit them, hit them, hit them. Did they drop him? I'm not sure. Okay, we seem to have a little bit of damage, but it's nothing major. We have enough death to play with. Secure the guns, we are going under. Come on, dive the build. Where's the observation periscope to have a look at this? They will turn around short. Uh, yeah, they will turn around very soon. They're still shooting us. Help. Okay, we need more crew in the engine compartment. Bring us down to 90 meters, please. And let me take care of this here. There we go. Do we have any damage? Uh, some light damage on the deck. But... Nothing major. Apparently... They did drop something on this run. Looks like depth charges. Oh, actually, yes, they are depth charges, and we took damage. Okay. Stop the dive here. Bring us up to 15. I need to repair crew. Let's see who will I? Yeah, my repair guys actually at the engines. Let's swap them out. I need you on damage control, together with a few more bodies. Also, let's see. You have to repair qualification. Get to it. Our boat received some damage this time, but it's fine. We'll manage. Let's have a look. Propeller starboard damaged. Oh, that's not so good. What do we have damaged here? The electric engines are damaged. Let's fix them up first. They are the priority right now. They're dropping more. They are actually... Are they dropping close to us? Yeah, well, not far away. So question for those of you who know their aircraft. What do we have here? Is this a PBY? Did the Brits use PBYs? Seems like it, doesn't it? Very much looks like a PBY. Quite fast, actually. Okay, here's what I'll be doing. We'll be changing our course now. No office on ham station. Yep, that's my bad. Let's bring you over into this compartment. Actually, 
you can rest. Let's get the Hemsman in here. There we go. Turn off. Interesting. More depth shot. How close are they getting to me? Nah, not close at all. This far away. But it's very interesting to see multiple things here at play. First of all, this is the first time, and I've been out here many days, this is the first time that I've seen aircraft. Now, of course, the aircraft that we are seeing here are probably the only aircraft that can reach this far, that they have. This is far, far away from the air bases. Much more interesting, though, these aircraft are carrying depth charges, not bombs. They are clearly carrying depth charges. You dropped everything, you did. What about the other guy? Wanna have a look at this. I think you dropped your last charges as well. Yeah, they dropped everything. Looks like they're flying away. But these guys... Clearly... They clearly carry depth charges. Now we have a bit of flooding and our general situation is not as good. We did receive some damage. It's difficult to say how much exactly. Well... This is going to take some time for us to repair the damage here. We have a lot of daylight ahead of us. Let's return to our course. We will have to leave this area. They will come back. I'm sure of that, that they will come back. Due to the very sudden situation, I didn't even get to welcome you today. Hello there, and welcome to today's episode of the Silent Hunter 3 campaign with the 1x mod edition. Yeah, this was a very sudden encounter that I did not expect to happen. Because we are that far out... That far away from England. I mean, let's say they have an airbase up here somewhere. That's still 950 kilometers. That's far. Even from Northern Ireland, they yeah, have about the same. That's very far away. Very, very far away. But here we are. We have been patrolling this area for quite some time without encountering anything. It is now the 18th of January, in fact. And, well, our fuel reserves are steadily dropping, but we still have a lot of endurance left in us. I will now focus the efforts of my crew on repairs to the boat. I will stay submerged until we have completed the repairs to the engines and to the stern torpedo, tu uh, tu stern torpedo room as much as we can. And then I will have to surface for repairs to the um, flag gun and to the forward deck. Depth charges. Well, well, well. Really, look at that. That's new. I don't think that so far we had any depth charges dropped by aircraft in this campaign. Now we have to contend with this. Oh boy, our life is only going to get more and more interesting. Bring us up to 40 meters. You know what, in fact, bring me up to... Bring me up to 30. Let's reduce the pressure on the hull. And while we do that, I will make a cut in the video. And we will resume it once we are hopefully out of this situation. See you soon.
welcome back. Sorry for the unusual beginning of today's video, but I was really surprised by those aircraft. And now, now we have actually repaired all the damage that we can repair while we are submerged. We now have to surface to complete the repairs on the forward deck and on the flag gun. Of course, the flag gun will have priority. I'm now bringing the boat up to periscope depth so that we can take a good look make sure that there are no aircrafts, aircraft in the vicinity and that we can surface safely. So let's do that. Periscope is going up. Let's first take a quick glance around us. Make sure that I don't see any shadows in the sky. Nothing. Okay, now let's take our time to scan the horizon more thoroughly. Nothing. Increase our speed down periscope. We are now increasing our speed to about 7 knots. And then we will surface. Let's go. Build the surfacing. Get us up there. There we go. In hindsight, thinking about this, would I have been able to dive as soon as I spotted those aircraft? Would I have had enough time to dive the boat? I think, in hindsight, yes. I think I would have managed that. So, if I see them again, these big silhouettes, I know that I'm gonna hit the crash dive command first and then we'll worry about everything else later. For now, we're back on the surface, we are increasing our speed. I do not want to recharge the batteries right now. We are going to recharge the batteries at night. Bring us to normal propulsion. Let's lower our speed a little bit, but let's stay. Yeah, let's stay at this speed. More or less, this is good. This is good. This gives us enough speed so that we can dive without delay. Okay, what else do we need to do? The sonar man is not required anymore. He can go there. And now, let's begin the repairs on the flag gun. They shouldn't take long. The flag gun should be repaired very, very soon. It only took minor damage. Same with the forward deck. That too shouldn't take. Yeah, there we go. Flag gun has already been cleared. Clear up the forward deck. And we are going to... Take a look. Oh, yeah, I can see. There's some damage to the boat. Some impacts from their 50 kills. Quite a few, actually. As I've already seen while the boat was dived, yeah, you see that when the boat is rising out of the water. There are also quite a few impacts on the boat's hull below the waterline, just below the waterline. But it's okay. This is just superficial damage. As soon as that is repaired, we will be alright. In fact, the forward deck has now been repaired. Everything has been cleared up. I can make sure that the damage control team is sent back to rest. They have done some hard work right now. And I'm gonna sort out my crew. And we are going to continue this patrol, hopefully without running into any more trouble caused by 
enemy aircraft. There we go. I did change my course. We were going northwest, now we are going southwest. I did change my course and I hope that when they do come back, or when new aircraft arrive, they will take some time to arrive, of course, all the way from England, that they will search somewhere up here. While I'm down here. That's my hope. Still, I now need to be aware that even this far out at sea, we can be reached by them. We can encounter aircraft. We are not... We are definitely not completely safe out here. And they are carrying depth charges. So even if we do dive, they can simply drop them on on our position. So that will be something that's going to be very, very scary. Alright. With those words, let's take a little break. It looks like today's video will be an unusual one. It is now in fact one day later. You can see it right here. It is now the 19th of January. We have repaired all the damage. We have recharged our batteries. We have not met another aircraft since yesterday's encounter. But we also didn't meet any ships for quite a few days already. And I want to use this opportunity that today we're having an episode that is a bit calmer than usual to talk about something in regards to aircraft in this game. You see, I have I have a huge issue with how aircraft in this game are represented. In fact, I have two big issues. Issue number one is that aircraft in this game, when they're being shot at by anti-aircraft fire, they seem to have a lot of, for lack of a better word, let's call it hit points. Even a biplane can take quite a few hits from this 20mm cannon before it goes down. And yes, this is only a 20mm cannon. It is, when we're talking about naval calibers, it is probably the smallest thing that you can find, apart from maybe a machine gun. But cannon-wise, this is probably the smallest thing that you will ever see on a boat, ship, U-boat, whatever. It's not big. But for a small aircraft, this thing should still be deadly. However, as I said, even a biplane will survive multiple hits. That's issue number one. So, an airplane on an attack run is quite hard to shoot down until you get access to much more powerful anti-aircraft weapons. You need multiple consecutive hits to down an aircraft with this thing. Issue number two, and I think this issue is actually bigger than the first one. Sadly, the airplane AI in this game is very far from perfect. I mean, don't get me wrong, it is leaks, it is leaks ahead of the broken airplane AI that we have in Silent Hunter 5. Silent Hunter 5's airplane AI is completely broken. They as soon as your boat vanishes beneath the waves, if you dive, they completely forget about you. Here in Silent Hunter 3, even if you dive, the airplanes will still try to bomb you. They will bomb the position where you have dived, or where they assume you are after diving. In Silent Hunter 5, there's nothing of that. So, the airplane AI in Silent Hunter 3 is actually better. However, one very, very crucial thing is missing. And I think it is missing in all Silent Hunter games and it really is a shame. Realistically, what would happen if an airplane attacks a target and that target meets the airplane with anti-aircraft fire? There's a good chance that the pilot of that airplane would get just a little bit nervous and might abort the attack run, especially if he should get hit. There's no such thing here. Sadly, in this game, airplanes will always 
stay on their attack run, regardless of how much anti-aircraft fire you throw at them. If only there was some kind of, let's call it a suppression mechanic, where if you just throw enough anti-aircraft fire at the airplane, it might be forced to abort the attack run and to veer off. That would be realistic. Right now, the first problem that I described is actually, well, kind of a workaround for the second problem. Because the airplanes will always stay on their attack run, they need to have more hit points so that they can survive the attack run without being immediately shot down. That's what I wanted to talk about. I really wish there was some way to refine the airplane AI so that suppression has an effect on them. And if that happens, then they can be given less hit points and one airplane alone might not be a huge danger for a submarine. But if there are multiple of them, even if one aborts its attack run, the second one can come in from another angle. While the anti-aircraft gunners are distracted by the first target, suddenly you need to think about, intelligently, think about how you will split your fire. How you will direct your fire at the different targets. Which target is currently the biggest danger to you. And you see how introducing more realism into something leads to a more engaging um, and interesting situation. I don't know, but please let me know in the comments if you do. How is this done in U-Boat, the game? How is it done there? Do they have aircraft suppression by anti-aircraft fire? I don't think they do. I think that even in that fairly new game, the aircraft AI is very rudimentary. Well, AI in general doesn't seem to be too great in that game from what I have been able to see so far. But yeah, let me know. Let me know what you think about it. Maybe... Maybe this is something that can be worked on. Maybe the devs of U-Build will one day surprise me and actually steer that game in a direction that truly resembles a simulation. I somehow doubt it. There's too much wrong with that game. There are too many things that are... that came way too late in the development process. I don't think it will ever really rival Silent Hunter for the title of a true submarine simulation. But yeah, let me know what you think. I'm really looking forward to your comments. For now, I think we will end today's episode on this note. This was an episode that is a bit calmer. An episode where our boat did get damaged and they do hope that we don't have repercussions later down the line because of that. I hope that nothing was damaged in so far that our hull stability is compromised. I dearly hope so, because the waters here are extremely deep. And I hope that next time we will be able to engage a nice big fat juicy convoy. Yeah, I hope that happens. Until then, have some really great days and I'm looking forward to seeing you again next time. Goodbye.